afternoon. Now, one of the most mystical things in general aviation is the fuel system on a Cessna 310. So I thought today I'd take you through a little bit about the fuel system. Uh, don't quote me on it. If you get it wrong, you end up uh, letting your engines get a little bit hungry. Not my fault. I was never here. Um, but one of the reasons I think that the fuel system is so mystical on the 310 is because people don't read the book. It's a very good book. Uh, lots of pictures, lots of words, all that sort of stuff. Um, and it does spell it out um, fairly uh, fairly adequately. It's just that you've got to, uh, got to have a bit of a read of the book whilst you're sitting in the aeroplane just to get your head around it. But anyway, on to the fuel system. So an interesting part of the 310 fuel system is that we have the mains out in the tips there. Uh, they hold a total across the two of them of 380 litres or 100 gallons uh, and they feed from the tip straight to the engine there. So, so far fairly straightforward. What gets confusing to most people, not confusing but it's a thing that is sometimes misunderstood and has caused several 310s to land in paddocks, is that we have the auxiliary tanks which are filled there and are in between the two spars, the, the forward and the rear spar. And uh, still so far so good, they feed straight to the engine. But this is where it gets a bit interesting. So the engine driven pump or the electrical auxiliary pump, which we'll, uh, we'll come to shortly, feeds fuel to the engine at a pressure higher than what it actually needs. So that's still all right because it's got a relief valve and it returns fuel or vapor back to the tank. So any of the fuel it doesn't use gets returned to the tank. Here's where the catch is. It returns only to the main tank. So no matter which tank you've got selected, you could be using the ox tank here, which is feeding fuel to the engine. And then the excess fuel is being sent back to the main there. Still not really an issue. However, where it becomes an issue is if this main tank happens to already be full because as much as people have tried in the past you can't get more than 100 percent of fuel in the tank which means it ends up venting overboard so if you haven't burnt enough fuel out of your main tank to have the room for that excess fuel coming back from the engine if you're operating on the auxiliary tank then there is no ifs or buts about it you are venting the fuel overboard so it is very possible to be pumping your fuel overboard in a 310 which is uh, where the, uh, the perceived issue with the fuel system comes into play. Now, which I, I don't really think it's an issue. It's a very lovely aeroplane. It just needs a bit more understanding of a fuel system than most twins. Just to complicate our situation a bit more, we can have optional nacelle or wing locker tanks. Um, there's a couple of different sizes you can get from the factory. Now, this is the, uh, the biggest size one that we have. But these tanks don't feed to the engine. They only feed into the mains. So what you do is you burn enough out of the mains that you can fit the fuel from the ox tank here into the mains. You then turn on a fuel transfer switch there, which are those two little uh, left and right switches there and there. And it then pumps the fuel from the nacelle tank into the main. So the same catch applies that if there isn't enough space in the main tank, then all you're doing is pumping this into the main, which then goes overboard. And you've then pumped out fuel that you were planning on having available, uh, but you now don't. So if you haven't realized that fact, then you are going to run out of fuel earlier than you expected. Where the fuel system in a 310 does become very gentlemanly, is with the fuel selectors. So we've got the selector and it just points to which tank you're taking fuel from. So there's no ambiguity, it just flicks into a detent there. You probably can't hear it click into the detent. And for example, we point onto the right main for the right engine, or if we were cross feeding, we'd be taking fuel from the left main. That's a fairly straightforward there. However, we've just discussed, haven't we, that we have a main tank, an auxiliary tank, and we also have a nacelle tank, but no, uh, no nacelle selected. And that's because, like we were just discussing, we pump the fuel from the nacelle out to the main uh, with those little pumps there, little switches there. 
Um, when the, uh, you know, we've got no, no battery master on, so there's no noise being made, but when we've exhausted the fuel in the nacelle tank, then the uh, these little lights, which are attached to sensors, sense the uh, drop in fuel pressure and come on to show us that, um, that we no longer have any fuel in there and tells us to turn these pumps off because those pumps are lubricated by the fuel itself. So when they're running dry, then it just means that we're wearing them out. Now the catch with that is, if you're sitting in the pilot seat about here, you've got the throttles in the way, you do have to be fairly conscious of looking at it. And it takes about an hour to pump the fuel from the nacelle out to the mains. So as you're getting close to that hour, you've got to be looking fairly, uh, fairly consciously for those lights, waiting for them to come on, because especially some glare, they can be difficult to see. Another gentlemanly part of the 310 fuel system are the fuel gauges. Uh, they're some of the few fuel gauges in Cessnas that you can reasonably expect to rely upon. Uh, so with the fuel selectors on the mains down there, the fuel gauges show the quantity in the mains. Whereas if I swap across to the ox tank there, we now have the fuel quantity in the right ox there shown, which is of course not much. And you can also see that we've got the right ox light on. So that shows that we've got the, uh, we've got the ox selected. You can then push switch up to the main whilst you're on the ox tank and the light goes out and it shows you the quantity in the opposite tank. Now if the reverse applies, if we go down and turn fuel selector back to the main, we can press the button down and it'll show you what's actually in the oxes. Let it go and it comes back up to the mains. So that's all fairly user friendly. Uh, when you are operating on the oxes and then flick back to look at what's in the mains, you will see it gradually increasing the quantity in the mains. Uh, that's because of that return system where it's pumping the excess fuel or returning the excess fuel to the main tank. Uh, you'll also see if you're operating on the mains and you're pumping fuel with the little transfer pumps from the nacelle tanks, you will watch the, uh, the gauges increase the quantity in the mains, which is a little bit of a bizarre thing the first time you see it for your fuel quantity being increasing. Uh, but one of the intricacies of the 310 fuel system. Another reasonably misunderstood part of the 310 fuel system are the fuel boost pumps there, which you see just under the control column, left of the throttle quadrant, got the mag switches, got the master switches, we've got the primer switches, the start switches, and we've got these fuel boost switches. Now, you may be able to see there, if I get past the control column, uh, you've got three positions. You've got off in the middle where it Hang on a minute, let me get this out of the way. There we go. You've got, oh, there we go, there we go. Off in the middle, down to low, and then up to high. And you've got to actually pull it past that little gate there to get to high. Now, it's now called, after the implementation of a service bulletin you know, some years ago, I don't actually remember the year, uh, MEB 33-8 uh, or 83-3, or it's got eights and threes in it anyway. And what that did was to configure the switches how they are now with low, off and high. But previous to that, had low, off and on. And so on was up where high was. And the way on worked was that it was actually still just low boost, except it was essentially armed for if it detected a drop in the, in the pressure being delivered from the engine driven fuel pump, it turned it on to high. Um, for some reason, I'm assuming that they they decided that that system was a bit unreliable, they implemented this service bulletin to make it simply low, off or high, um, which then gives us a uh, placard that, and, a, and a flight manual supplement that tells us that high should only be used for an engine driven fuel pump failure. Um, so for all other operations where you need auxiliary fuel pump pressure, then we'll just use low, because it is very, very possible to flood 310 engines in flight. Uh, if you've got um, the mixture a little bit rich and you go high high boost on the pumps uh, or even the mixture leaned as it should be, the engine driven pumps are working and you go to high boost, uh, then it will flood the engine, or very, very likely to. Um, I know in training when I've even had, uh, had low boost pumps on, I've given the student a simulated engine failure by pulling the mixture. And then uh, once I go to set zero thrust, so to basically start the engine back up, push the, in, the, uh, the mixture back in and give a little bit of throttle to simulate feathered. Uh, sometimes the engine won't catch if the low boost pump's still on. And it even does talk about in the manual that for, uh, for single engine operations to, uh, to turn the inoperative engine boost pump to off. Uh, and the reason, for, uh, the reason it won't, uh, won't start back up again is because it's just running far too rich with that fuel going in. So what I do is I cut the mixture, turn the pump off, 
push the mixture back up again and, and then it fires. Uh, so very possible to flood 310 engines in, uh, in flight. The other possibility is uh, you're approaching top of descent, something like that, where you've got the mixtures leaned. If you treat it like a 172, and uh, not how I treat a 172, but how people seem to be taught these days, is just jam the mixture rich again at top of descent. If you're up at 10,000 feet uh, and you do that in a 310, uh, very high chance that the engines will just conk because they're, um, they're running far too rich. So we do need to, uh, to make sure that we're leaning them properly, um, which is done by utilizing our fuel flow indicator here and see there it's so clever it has cruise power percentage powers so essentially if you look in your uh, in your flight manual uh, chapter 5 for performance and say you pick uh, 65 percent power which is about 23 inches 2300 rpm you simply level off set 23 23 and then pull the mixtures back until fuel flow is sitting at 65 percent there which is uh, really quite clever actually. Saves us uh, having to lean by the EGTs. We can then just monitor the EGTs, which are down there, to make sure that they're looking somewhat normal. And it also, the blue ones, give us the, um, the desired mixture settings or fuel flows for different, uh, different altitudes we're on climb through. So the auxiliary fuel pumps that we're talking about that supplement the engine driven pumps, they're located down in the bottom, get back so you can see the whole tip tank, down in the bottom of the tip tank, about there. Uh, we also have another pump that sits on the aft bulkhead of the tank, which is about here. And it runs continuously whenever the battery master switches on. And when the battery master switches on, you can just hear it tick, tick, tick. It's only a very, very low boost pump. But what it does, is it's pumping fuel from the front of the tank to the bit down here where the auxiliary fuel pump is, which is also where the engine driven fuel pump picks up the fuel and takes it to the engines. And that's allowing a steep angle of descent when you've got not much fuel in the main tanks. So essentially you can still descend and, uh, and be able to use the tanks for their whole capacity rather than not being able to pick it up if you're in a descent and it's all drained to the front of the tank. Another thing that the manual warns about is excessive use of either the, uh, the primer switch for left or right, or the, uh, the boost pumps on during engine, uh, engine start on the ground where it hasn't fired or you've had the pumps on for too long before you've cranked it. And you can get uh, fuel pooling up in the intake of the, of the cylinders. And then uh, it actually can apparently lead to, uh, to hydraulic lock just like oil in a radial can. So something to be avoided. Um, but even starting these 520s, you know, there's only two amounts of fuel that you can put in. There's either not enough or too much. It's never just right. But on that note, let's see how we go starting it up. So, fuel's on the mains. We'll go and check our trims are set, set, set. We'll go the mixtures rich. Listen to this. Classic 310 noise. Props are up, throttles back and cracked open about a quarter, oh, about probably a quarter of an inch or so. Across to our mag switches, one, two, three, four. One gang bar, just like the king here to turn them all off at once. But make sure they're all on. Gear handle is down. Go to our master switch, which is on. We've got three greens. And then across here to our start switches. So the manual says to start left engine first because it's the shortest run from the battery. So the least voltage drop, and it says to crank the engine first, then prime it to avoid flooding the engine. So we'll go clear left, and let's see what they reckon. So we'll go crank and then prime, and it's almost going to fire. RPM, I like to let gently increase as the oil thins out. Oil pressure's come up. Dole's eye is out. We've got the alternator failed light working. So then we turn the alternator on and the light's gone out and we've got a charge. And then right to start the other side. Hope you found some interest in the 310 fuel system. Uh, but very highly recommended to read the book. 
read the flight manual and uh, learn a bit about it before you start operating one of these because there are those few little catches that uh, can turn into fairly big catches if you're not careful with it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next